In this video, I want to share a little bit of information about fuses. Since I got in this business over 20 years ago, I've acquired literally hundreds of fuses. And a lot of times I've run into a little problem when it came to identifying what it was I had. Now, uh, some of these fuses came from other TV repair shops that have closed, and in some cases they've come from uh, suppliers, different sources. But there are so many different types of fuses, I thought I'd start about talking about some of the different types of fuses and the funny little shapes they have. Uh, used to be the most common fuse you'd see in TV repair was one of these fuses here, which is uh, known as a 6.35 6 by 31.75 millimeter, or if you want to use the standard American engineering, you can go by that. And uh, generally look like this here. And uh, over the years we've switched over to the more commonly used uh, 5 by 20 millimeter fuse. Or again, if you want to use standard American engineering, there's your number there. Um, first, I want to talk about some of the misconceptions that a lot of people have about fuses. One is that uh, a lot of people have assumed that, uh, including myself, by the way, that, that these ceramic fuses are always going to be slow blow. That's not necessarily the case. A lot of times these ceramic fuses can be fast blow as well. Uh, the difference between these ceramic fuses, uh, everyone I've seen is full of sand and they're known for being more durable in industries like aerospace for example where you might have an issue where, where vibrations are uh, a real significant issue and if you look at the numerical designation on the fuses you'll see that somewhere in there it'll have an H an M or an L indicating its durability as far as its ability to withstand shock and breakage and all that and so um, if you do have a ceramic fused uh, and it has no markings on it, don't assume it's a slow blow. Now the other thing I had some misconceptions about, I always assumed that a straight piece of wire going through a fuse could never be a slow blow and I found out that's not necessarily the case. I was looking through all my fuses here, writing down the numbers that were on them and, and analyzing what the numbers said versus the type of uh, filament they had in them and I found out that sometimes a slow blow can be just a straight piece of wire. More commonly a slow blow is going to look like this, it'll have like a little piece of solder bead inside there or, as a lot of you know, the coil inside the fuse, sometimes it'll be wrapped around something that uh, is a little bit heat resistant. So, there are different types of slow blow fuses. Um, some are very fast blowing, and some are, you know, uh, just fast blowing, and then you've got very slow blowing, and then just slow blowing. And the, the most common designator, or letter you'll see on a fuse to indicate how fast it blows, is either a F for fast, or a T for time delay, or slow blow. And if it's a very slow blow, it'll have two T's. Now once in a while you'll see one that'll have an S on it for slow blow, but for the most part, uh, at least from my research, I went over and wrote down a bunch of numbers off my own fuses here. It seemed like most of the slow blows that I came across either had an F on them somewhere or a T. In fact, if we look at this one up here, uh, here for example, here we've got a T 3.5 amp H indicating how durable the fuse is as far as its breakage capacity. So uh, hopefully that'll help you out if you've ever uh, been in a situation didn't know what type of fuse you're looking at. A lot of people have made the mistake of assuming when they saw one of these triangles here that that meant it was a slow blow and I found out that's not necessarily the case. In fact, just for the fun of it I was copying down a lot of these tiny little logos that were printed on the fuse to see if there was anything else I could use to tell me what the fuse was here. and. Uh, I guess these are some sort of company logos. Here's one from Underwriter Laboratories, I guess, and that's that's for Little Fuse. But uh, a lot of these, I don't know what they are. Um, for all I know, they're probably just company logos or uh, symbols for a secret society or something. Anyway, another thing you'll commonly see on the automotive fuses, um, the larger ones, that is, they'd have a gauge on the back that would tell you what size the fuse was. 1AG, for example, would be about this tall or or you know 9 AG would be the size of the fuse here and if, if you look at the numerical designator on the fuse for example A, A stood for uh, automotive G stood for glass so AG fuses commonly sold in automotive repair stores are generally stated that they're only good up to 32 volts I don't know that it would be a problem if you used one in something that had a higher voltage uh, it seemed to me a fuse is always a fuse whether it was 250 volts or 125 volts um, never had a problem there as far as you know the different voltages and uh, of course
course some will say SFE on them if they're automotive as well AGC AGC is good up to 250 volts uh, the 311 meant the fuse is good up to 32 volts um, anyway again there's the there's the the uh, size on the older type of fuse if you ever have to order one and then we've got the uh, the more commonly used ones in electronic repair other than the surface mounted that was a 5x20 and uh, I never had to worry about that in the old days if I needed a fuse I just called my part supplier there was no having to describe what type of fuse it was basically one type of fuse and that would be something like this I mean you'd have to designate whether it was fast or slow blow but there were no ceramic fuses in the initial stages in television repair and the other thing I was going to say a lot of the fuses have uh, change in, in their size and whatnot. You, you can hardly recognize a fuse nowadays. Here's some, for example, they refer to as IC protectors. So if you didn't know what to look for, you might pass something like this up, not realize you're looking at a fuse. There's one that looks like a transistor with two wires on it. There's one that looks more like a resistor without the color bands. Here's a round one. Automotive, automotive. These were often automotive. That there, I don't know, house, uh, electrical system not likely to deal with anything like that and we've got these square ones here and here's some thermal fuses now these are commonly found in appliances when the manufacturer wants to have a little extra safety factor in there the thermal fuse will open up from heat not just excessive current and uh, I was going to say um, this some might think this is risky, risky but on occasion if I needed let's say a, a micro fuse or a surface mounted fuse and I didn't have one handy a lot of times I would take, you know, stranded wire like this and I would uh, take a single strand off and, and I'd, I'd figure out what, what current capacity it would blow at. I've got a variable power supply and, and I've, had to, I've had to sometimes bridge a single strand like this across a, uh, where a fuse goes. But like I said, I, I pre-calculate about what current capacity the thing will open up at. So, yeah, these thermal, thermal fuses are commonly found in the... Um, appliances in fact they generally don't solder them in they're generally put on with crimps and I believe the reason for that is because they often operate in such hot environments that uh, well solder solder may go bad in a, in a case like that you know and uh, you don't you don't want your solder to fail on you so um, yeah having a good set of crimps is a plus uh, the other thing I was going to say now Every once in a while, if I'm in a situation where I need a fuse, or, I, or I'm working on a TV and I think it's likely to blow another fuse, I'll just grab one of these circuit breakers here, and I'll put, it, I'll put the two alligator clips across the fuse, and um, that's often, you know, saved me from having to waste fuses when I didn't have, uh, when my troubleshooting skills uh, weren't quite up to par and I didn't have the TV fixed. Uh, the only problem I found with these circuit breakers is they've got kind of a slow opening time sometimes, so here we've got a, like a 2.1 amp. Uh, I would feel safer using something like this in a 3 amp circuit. Uh, you'd need them to open up fairly fast on you. And uh, let's see, I hope I didn't miss anything here. Um, I was going to say on some of these older fuses here, it, it was common, fairly common on, on the larger fuses to see a uh, a number that would indicate whether it was fast or slow blow. For example, a 312 meant it was a flash blow, or a 218, 314, or a 324. And if it's a slow blow, often it would have a 